Hello and welcome to Right From The Kickoff. I'll be back your host this week, William Bayless. And to join me, as always, is my football partner in crime, the one and only Joe. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm good, mate. Lots of talking points. Um, oh, again, that's a lot, know, yeah. Good week of football. Uh, let's get started. And there's only one topic we can really start with, and that's uh, uh, the match being postponed because of the Glazer protests. Uh, so for anyone who don't know, uh, Joe, would you like to explain it to the viewers? Yeah, base, basically this is all culminating with um, obviously the Glazers wanting to go into the Super League. Obviously, if you don't know, the Glazers own Manchester United. Um, you know, it's Man United fans, let's make no bones about it, have been very unhappy with the Glazers for a number of years, really, since Alex Ferguson left. Let's not be let's be honest about that. Um, of course, these protests happened. Uh, loads of Man United fans broke in onto the pitch just before about an hour before kickoff was supposed to be in the Man U and Liverpool game. Obviously, big game for the Premier League, so the fans knew it would get the press. Uh, game ends up being cancelled. Obviously, like I was just about to say, that it's it's kind of fueling the fire with this whole Super League thing. I think it's not necessarily all about the Super League, this particular protest, but it's def- definitely the Super League was the catalyst that pushed this one to the forefront. Um, fans, some fans peacefully protest, you know, on the pitch and stuff, but then there was other kind of violent protests. Obviously, some police officers got hurt, fans got their nose broken and stuff. So when they say it's peaceful protests, not exactly right. Um, you know, obviously it was a massive game for the Premier League, not just uh, this week in terms of the last sort of bit. So, yeah, I mean, what did you think of it, Will? I mean, where do you sit on it? Because there's part of me that, say, sits, uh, sit, that basically sits there and says, well, I get why they're doing it, but there's a way to do it, isn't there? I think that's that's the point. I think, you know, I get the protest, but you've got to protest peacefully. I don't know where you sit on it. Well, I do agree they should protest priestly, but they've been unhappy for years and years and years. And the football club has almost, and other football clubs uh, like Man United, have said, oh, you have other forms of way of protesting when you fit and want to. Uh, I was actually listening to another podcast the other day, the True Geordie, and they made a very good point about people have been protesting for years but only when it suits the Man United or other such things. But that's not the point of a protest. The point of a protest is is to be disruptive, to get your voice heard. And I think it's just, they're just frustrated that the other forms of protesting, nothing has actually came from it. Every time they protest, Man United or, or other teams where teams have protested have gave them little nuggets to get back to, to appease them when really the bigger picture they're just going to do what they want anyway and yeah i think that's the only real way they could have done it disrupt the what's the one way right you're going to do it stop them playing football you know? yeah yeah that's and true. as we say multiple times without the fans and the fan support they're nothing like the glazers are so controlling with our whole green and gold they want the glazers going or whatever the chant is they actually banned green the infamous green and gold shirt being banned from uh, the stadium just because it's a protest against that and if that's not uh, restrictive of a fans we don't know what it is and it's just boiling over and frankly I, I'm, I'm not um, saying that it's right that people hurt each other because that is not true at all but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean... agree it should be peaceful but I, I think overall, then it's the only way you're going to get your voice heard. Isn't yeah, it? no, I, I actually do agree with you, Will. I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're fans of the game, aren't we? We know that this has kind of been boiling over for the past fortnight now. Um, you know, I feel, I feel as if, you know, these... American owners, the Glazers, and I mean, we're not just talking about the Glazers here, we're talking about, let's be honest, the owners of the, the, the big, the so-called big six. This isn't going away anytime soon, is it? Let's be honest. No um, you know, we, we sat there and we said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, yeah, it was a, it was a win for the fans, but let's be honest, it's going to be a, it's going to be messy for the next couple of years. I, I, you know, I can see it still being tried to be pushed through. Um, 
I just feel like, like you say, the, the Glazers, though, are they really going to listen? You know, I was listening to, you know, Graham Souness, obviously Sky Sports pundit, and, you know, he, he's, he's kind of, he offered a very kind of maybe unpopular opinion, but not, not kind of the, the rhetoric opinion anyway. Um, in terms of him saying kind of like, well, they're business owners, so all they're going to care about is their kind of financial bottom line and all this sort of stuff. And and I was sitting there going, come on, you know, and he was kind of was trying to see the way they were thinking about it. And I was thinking, come on, Graham, man, you know, you are you are a, a, a hard footballing man. You know, you've got football through your veins. Surely you should understand the man in the street, the football fan, as to why they're doing this. And let's, let's not make, you know, let's be understanding of where we're coming from on this podcast as we are both football fans so we feel like this particular issue does directly affect us yes we're not we're not fans of man united but let's be honest it's not just this this situation is so much bigger than just man united you know the whole point of this this protest and where it stemmed from is because it was an attack on english football so where where you talk about oh it's Man United fans, this isn't just about Man United fans. It still stems back to the Super League. It still stems back to what they're trying to do to English football. You know the green and gold colours that you spoke about. You know that that's from when Man United were called New and Heath when they first started up. You know factory workers, the the hot life and soul of of Man United of of kind of their their club history and what they're all about. And the fact that their owners are trying to get that banned because they see it as a form of protest just kind of shows you what they're about in terms of the way they think about this stuff. And they're trying to get into a club. Bear in mind, they're still sat in America. Do you know what I mean? They're not even over here trying to sort this out or get negotiations going on with the fan forums or anything like that. So, you know, I, I understand the frustration for sure. Yeah, 100%. And obviously, it's not just American owners. And a lot, there's some really good American owners out there. Um, yeah, there is. Have a look at Wickham Wanderers, for example. They adore the club. Have a look at Wrexham, Ryan Reynolds, and uh, uh, the guy from uh, <laughs> uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they can tell they care about the history. And obviously, this isn't a general blanket because, of course, it's not. And I understand that as owners, you want to make money because I think... traditionally, ownership people have been losing money in football. Football yeah. is unsustainable at the end of the day. So I yeah. kind of, I, I do understand the business standpoint. Um, yeah. Like, I understand why they want to do it, but I think they should invest it. Like the infrastructure, they haven't in, invested much into the stadium for years, have they? It's the same as yeah. the years and years, years. The training ground, it's, it's a good training ground, but they haven't invested as much as other clubs. Have a look at Leicester, how much they spent on that. Uh, I read it something the other day, like Man United have uh, spent like 125 million over the last 10 years on the infrastructure, which is nothing if you think about it. Leicester just spent 100 million in the last year alone on the new training ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, bring a point about I sent it to you earlier on Facebook. It just highlights the really, really good owners such as Brighton and Leicester. Like their ownership, they can tell they generally care about. No, the club. but I, but I, but I, I, I think what you've got there, well, and I've always said this to you. Um, you know, I'm a proud Leicester fan, and that's partly down to our, our, you know, our well, really well run club. Um, you know, and I think you a lot of fans look at our owners and they're jealous honestly and that's a great position to I'm be in. jealous <laughs> yeah I mean I mean like you say top and the guys from Leicester they, they really care about the club and they're foreign owners but you know what they've come into the city of Leicester and they get it and they also want to point out a thing about top and obviously Vichai when he was alive um, rest in peace he you know they, they came to every home game you know they were there they were involved in the club. And this is what I'm saying is these big corporate owners of clubs, you know, like Stan Kroenke and the Glazers, they're not they're nowhere to be seen at the games. Um, and I think that's that's just a small frustration, but it kind of shows you where where these owners are at. You know, top even in during COVID has been in a lot of the Leicester a lot of the Leicester games to watch the club and watch what's going on. He knows the players, you know, he's got personal relationships with the players. And I think that just shows you the difference in 
in kind of how the owners work and why and why the fans love him. You know, you look at what Top's given back to the Leicester fans as well. You know, and I think again, it's just it stems in that frustration of being a Man United fan and not having that connect with the club or not even knowing anything about the club. You know, there was a report. There was a report a couple of weeks ago, obviously with the Super League, that one of these. Uh, Super Six owners had to turn to one of the chief execs and go. So which which team are we? He didn't even know what colour his team were playing in. Um, which which is unbelievable, really, isn't it? Yeah, it just shows they they don't really care about the results because at the end of the day, they care about making money, about globalisation, making the club seem massive around the world. Which Man United have done very very well. Fair play to them, but. They, they don't really care about how it is, as long as they get Champions League football, which Man United don't always get nowadays. Yeah. That's yeah. all they really care about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course it is. It's all about the money and it's all about what, how much, the, like the, like I said, the financial bottom line says at the, the end of the quarterly, you know, annual report. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, move, moving on. I think we should move on to the football now. I think that's enough. This yeah. particular topic gets me 100%. angry. 100%. And that match did, well, it would have huge ramifications on the actual results uh, away from the whole Glazer situation. So, yeah. because that's been postponed, it was a very good time for other teams to play a bit of catch like Tottenham, Chelsea, West Ham. They made big gains this weekend. So, let's let's jump into yeah. it, shall we, Joe? So, let's start yeah. with the first game of the weekend on the Friday night, the game you watched religiously, Southampton-Leicester now. Leicester will be kicking themselves after this game. There were uh, Southampton had an early red card uh, with Vestergaard being sent off in the tenth minute, so they had eighty minutes to win this game. But Southampton actually took the lead via yeah. a Ward Prowse uh, uh, penalty. So, what did you make of it? Then, well, Jay? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for a different style now because obviously. I'm all about Leicester. I'll talk about them in a second, but I just want to say for Southampton, you know, they, they put in a great performance going down that early to 10 men, which I don't believe the card was a red card, by the way. Um, you know, I think he was very unlucky. It went down as a goal scoring opportunity um, as to why he was being sent off. I, I think the keeper would have come out and collected the ball. So I think it was all a bit, it could have been, I think it might be rescinded. I think, I don't know what they've done with it, but they might be going to the FA and looking at getting it rescinded. And I think it will be rescinded. Um, I, I thought they were unlucky, but after that, I thought they played really well, especially with the fact that it was very carbon copy of what happened the year before at St Mary's early sending off. Oh, um, course, yeah. You know, so I think that psychologically that must have been in their minds. Uh, but no, they played really well, and I think you know Ralph Hossen, who to Lee, will be he'll be very pleased with the performance. And like you said, they took the lead in this game. Um, Leicester got level. Um, I think I think if you go down to if you're facing ten men, it's kind of the the minimum you expect. You don't ever expect to lose. Um, so, but no, Southampton did really well and they deserved the point. And I think if they'd have had a full 11, I think we were talking about this though. Actually, for Leicester's style of play, it might have benefited Leicester if they'd have had 11 on the pitch. Um, but because obviously they sat 10 behind the ball, but no, Southampton credits to them, good, good result. From a Leicester perspective, um, you know, very disappointed to drop the two points. I was, I, I'll, I'll be honest. With you, I was fuming on Friday night after the game. I, I was messaging you after, wasn't I? And yeah, I wasn't you were happy. not happy. I wasn't happy. Uh, but looking at it, we're still in a very strong position after the game. It is two points dropped and a massive two points dropped. But I still think we're in pole position, uh, you know, with two two wins away from securing Champions League. So I'm not too worried, especially with how our next opponents, Newcastle, which we'll go on to, played this weekend. Um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling still pretty confident about that. I didn't think we played great, but you know, a point's a point, and it's a point in the right direction. That's all I'll say on that. But it was a disappointing result for sure, especially with, like you say, Southampton going down to ten men. Yeah, it's always tough against ten men because they they seem to always sit back and just try to hit you on the counter, and they did that quite effectively with a penalty, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, they did. They did, and you know when you've got players like uh, Ward Prowse and you know Chi Adams as well, he can he's, he can offer a bit of pace. 
and stuff. So they, they did work effectively. And I thought Nathan Redman, actually, my man of the match, he, he, he ran his socks off in terms of trying to give him some sort of attacking threat going forward. So and I think the penalty they, they actually won uh, came from a Redmond run. I don't think he can, he got the penalty conceded against him, but you know he, he was he was a live wire in the box, so they did very well. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Let's move on to the, the second match of the weekend, the first game on the Saturday, Crystal Palace Man City. Now this finished two 0 Man City, and what did they make of it, Joe? Uh, not really. Expect not. Nothing kind of untoward of what we expected. I know we said no predictions. I think you said 3 0, I said 4. It was 2 0 in the end. <laughs> but uh, it was kind of a run of the mill performance. I mean, <laughs> Crystal Palace played well for about an hour. And then eventually, what happens against any Pep side, really, isn't it? You know, they, they, they kind of wear you down. Obviously, Aguero getting a goal, brilliantly taking goal, a predatory striker instinct. And then Torres getting the Fernand Torres getting the um, the second, uh, but it's more than what they deserved, and obviously they'll win the title now. I mean, they're 13 points ahead. Uh, title's done and dusted. Obviously, it has been for months, but um, you know that they'll they'll be glad that they've got it out of the way, sort of thing. Yeah, so, and yeah. It, it was a very almost a second string level. I, I know that it was still a really really strong side, which shows that. Uh, Depth and strength of Man City, but I mean, it, it's it's all looking ahead to the they had, they second had leg, half, isn't it? Yeah, they had half the half a billion pounds worth of players on the bench, um. So that kind of shows you where you are. I mean, with Man City, I always take it with a pinch of salt. I think what Pep's done with them is fantastic. You know, he's really got the best out of them. Don't get me wrong, but I have to say, you know, when you've got that kind of talent sitting on your bench, and your second string could probably win a Premier League title as well. Um, you know, you they are overwhelming favourites, probably even going into next season as well. Uh, their main focus, obviously, will be Champions League. They're 2-1 up against PSG, and that's happening this week, I believe, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. So... It's second leg, and there's doubts over whether um, Mbappe is going to start, because he's, it's been a bit injury sideline. But credit to Man City last Champions League game, going back. They nullified Mbappe perfectly. I think yeah. that was a, and a really, really good performance. Yeah, they did. I think I think it's that whole thing of, of whoever whoever wins this particular game will be going favourites into the final. Because, I mean, Real Madrid yeah. and Chelsea are good sides, don't get me wrong. Um, but Real Madrid aren't what they used to be. Let's, let's, let's make no bones about that. And then you've got, obviously, Chelsea, who are a good side, but they are currently in in fourth spots, numerous points behind Man City. So, you know yeah. that, that, that Man City are the better team overall. So, we'll see what happens. Right, let's move on to Brighton Leeds. Now, this was 2-0 Brighton. It's quite surprising, actually. We actually managed to find the back of the net twice and Leeds didn't even end up scoring. What did you think of it, Joe? It's it's funny. It's funny because, obviously, we, we, had, uh, we had Leeds wins for this. Um... I think, I think it was a, a a cocktail of kind of nothing to play for and a bit of a trying of a, a mismatch in terms of in a couple of areas, um, but I think Brighton were were well deserved for the win and I think what they've just done what they did and I think we'll see by this weekend's results and stuff they we've made the relegation battle now very very boring because it's it's done now isn't it effectively. Um, you know, there's. I think it's nine points between Fulham and uh, the next the next team up, and I can't see Fulham getting nine points. And obviously, with the draw last night, the West Brom got it's over for them as well. So it's actually yeah. a very boring close to the season, which was shaping up to be quite a tasty one to, a couple of weeks back, wasn't it? Yeah, they just couldn't find the next gear. Could then West Brom had a few unlucky results. I mean, they sh- should have beaten. Uh, Aston Villa, but if it wasn't for that really, really poor defending in the last minute, and we'll move on to West Brom's uh, later on. But yeah, you're completely right. It should have been a lot tighter, but that's football for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is, and I think it's it's going to be a bit of a boring one now because, like you say, even though anybody who thinks that the the any of the bottom three team or any of the two of the three, because obviously Sheffield United have already been relegated, um. I think anybody who thinks that needs to give their head a wobble because it's done. You know, the right three teams are getting relegated, in my opinion, just not good enough, really. But anyway, moving on. Yeah, Brighton, good result. Uh, 
you know, they're, they're now staying up, which I'm happy with because I think uh, we were talking about it and we'll obviously go on to talk about this a little bit later. But um, I think uh, Graham Jotter's done a, done a great job there and the style of football they play. I think they'll be, they'll be a force to be reckoned with next season if they can take the chances. Yeah, I think that that's a key thing. Once they take the chance to stop, I think they'll come to be, be mid table. Because I mean, the amount of I mean they should be. Create, the amount of chances they've created this season has been astronomical, really, isn't it, for a club like Brighton? Yeah, and it's not like they've been poor chances. They've been real top quality chances as well. They just haven't yeah. put them to bed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, just a quick one as well. Congratulations to Watford and Norwich for their promotions to the Premier League. So. We'll be looking forward to seeing them playing against the big boys next season. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because you kind of wonder whether Norwich are gonna do their normal thing of absolutely tearing up the championship and then becoming the Premier League whipping boys again. Yeah. Um you do you do worry for them because I've we we were talking about this the other day, weren't we, that Norwich are the type of team that, you know, you, you sit there and you go yeah, if there was a league between the Championship and the Premier League, that's probably where they'd uh, that's probably where they'd sit. You know, there'd be quite a few teams league. in that bracket, wouldn't there? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, um, but uh, good luck to them. You know, good luck to the Canaries. Good luck to Watford. Glad to see them back in. And you know what? Fair play to them for getting up first time of asking as well. Both of them. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a difficult league to get out of for sure. So, yeah, it really is. Uh, so let's move on to. The third, well, fourth game, I should say. Chelsea Fulham. Now this was uh, finished two 0 Chelsea. Havertz double his scoring tally and hopefully he's getting a bit of confidence now. Which he was something to a player, which Chelsea thought they signed when they first got him at the start of the season. Seventy one million is always a high price tag, so hopefully he will start to give him into a bit of form now. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're always going to have a bit of time, and I think Werner and, and Havertz are, are kind of the you can kind of see that it's always going to take a bit of time to acclimatise to your surroundings and I think what we'll, we'll see a different Chelsea next season I think Chelsea will be a different force than they have been this season because I think you know Tuta will have, have a full season and he's he's transformed them as well let's not forget like defensively so much more solid um, you know and, and they are a force to be reckoned with uh, two 0 fair result. Um, I did think the goals came at very key times for Chelsea. You know, scored one earlier on in the first half, and then we second half when you thought, right, okay, Fulham is still in this. You know, Habit scores his, his his second and kills the game off. Um, I was disappointed from Fulham to be honest. I thought they, you know, with their backs against the wall, they might offer something more. We know they can play some decent football when they're when they're pushed. Um, but no, I was I was disappointed with their performance. And Chelsea have the quality; don't don't make any mistakes. But I thought they would cause Chelsea a few more problems than they did. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that Chelsea were were you know I said two 0 didn't I? I think in my prediction. But I thought yeah. I thought Fulham would cause them more problems, not necessarily have an impact on the result. But I just thought they'd have a bit more umph about them, and they really didn't, did they? To be honest, yeah, hundred percent, and. Yeah, I think that's um, gone like we said before. So, good luck to them next season again. But shall we move on to the next game? Yeah. Okay, so let's... Yeah, so this was Everton Aston Villa. Now, Aston Villa won this game 2-1. It was a hard-fought win for Villa at the end of the day. Uh, And it just ended Everton's uh, European hopes for next season don't you think Joe because they, yeah, have, it was a, they it still was had good. a bit of a glimmer but I think it's gone now it was a I think the, they've still got a chance for the Europa League obviously um I think I think um what was interesting was that um you know it was a good game Villa Villa, Villa didn't lie down, which, you know, I'm not saying I was expecting to, but they played very well. And Ollie Watkins had a great game. You know, Al Ghazi scored a brilliant goal. Villa have got some good players. And I think, actually, what we're seeing now is, obviously, they've had, they've had the, the latter part of the season without Grealish. Because they've known they've had to play without Grealish. Yeah. Um, they're actually starting to work better as a unit. I don't know whether you feel like that. Their performances are getting slightly better because they know they have to work without him. 
Yeah, they um, have to work as a unit more now. Yeah, yeah, they? they can't just count on their talisman. And I think they've actually gotten better since from when he got injured to now. I'm not saying they're playing their best stuff because we all know that they play their best stuff with Grealish in the side. But what I'm saying is, is there's a lot of players. Um, you know, you look like you look at Al Ghazi, for example. Um, you look at El Mahadini and all those those players. Uh, you know that they're, they're really kind of coming to the fore now, and I think it's 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 good to see. But I think Villa Villa are, are now going to be a mainstay in the Premier League. I think they've they've worked out a system to not be bothered by relegation for this for the time being. I don't know whether you agree with that. No, I completely agree with that. Um, so I think that they'll now be a mainstay in the Premier League. Um, I think Everton. I was disappointed. Honestly, I thought they'd offer more. Obviously, Cavalu and uh, got them the equaliser. After the Ollie Watkins goal, and I just I don't know it's it's come to it's come to a bit of a damp squid for Everton, hasn't it? You know, I had so much promise early on in the season. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said before, I think it's the injuries which really they just ran out of momentum towards the end of the season. But if it hadn't been for injuries, I think they would still be challenging, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would be. I mean, you look at players like Rodriguez who who hit who peaked early, really. You know, and obviously he's had his injury problems, and Calvert Lewin he's had his injury problems as well. We know that he's he's already he scored fifteen goals, and he's he's been out for a couple of months of the season as well. So you know they've they, they've had their injury problems, and and I think like a club like Everton, they're a big club, but they haven't got the squad to kind of um, rotate their key players, have they? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think that's what it came down to. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so that's like you say, it's what it comes down to. But I'm sure they'll be looking forward to next season. Yeah, hopefully get a few more quality players in, there, and then they'll yeah. be all guns blazing, won't they? Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, let's move on to some base pictures. So the first one was Newcastle Arsenal. This finished two 0 Arsenal, and uh, Newcastle didn't really give much of it, and they counted themselves really, did they? I think. They're pretty much safe now anyway, but 2 0 Arsenal, what did you think of it? Disappointing. I was very disappointed, you know, especially with obviously they were missing Joe Willock, who's their kind of super sub, if you like, because he couldn't play against his parent club. Um, but I just thought it was a good time to play Arsenal. Obviously, they've got their biggest game of the season against Villarreal on Thursday in the Europa League. Um, I just thought they, just nothing, you know, and and I will I will say this to them now: if they let if they let Leicester control the game like they did Arsenal, they'll lose. Yeah, um, they they will they will lose. It was a very poor performance. They let they let Arsenal control the game, and you can't you can't. And this is where Newcastle fans have a problem, in my opinion. I think Steve Bruce he's done well to keep them out of it, but I can understand why the style of football he plays at times. Sometimes he can he can play attacking football. There are some games where they turn off and they really have a go at teams. And there's other times where they go, well, we're just going to try and get a draw and stuff, and they haven't got the quality in the side to do that. You know, sometimes you need to play fire with fire. You know, you've got you've got uh, Callum Wilson up top, and I, I was just disappointed. I was. They really didn't. You know, um, all the sort of defence obviously uh, kept Sam Maximan quiet. You know, he played did a few party tricks as he usually does, and he's a good player. I'm not taking anything away from that, but I just thought I thought they were very very poor, and and I don't know whether Steve Bruce is the right man to take the ball, but I think that's the question in Newcastle that's been asked and asked and asked and asked and not answered yet. Um, so we'll see what happens. Arsenal, good result, but basically meaningless. You know, it's 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 a load of exhibition games for them now. Uh, in the yeah, they're just concentrating on the Europa League, which. They didn't do the best, did they? Uh, no, they, they but... didn't, but they're still in it. They got the away goal, didn't they? So Yeah, um, importantly. Still in it. So lucky anything to, could happen. They're, they're lucky like, to still be in it. It was a poor performance. Very poor. Yeah. Uh, now let's move on to a bit of a, a bit of a landslide, really. Uh, 4-0 uh, Sheffield United. The main headlines for me was the bail hat-trick, which was he, he's really coming into his own a bit more now. and I've, He's coming a bit more of a player that he is really like he's showing his true quality. But for me, the real headline is that the potential sending off VAR for me it's a clear red card, and I think you agree with me, don't you, Joe? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, you know, I think it it, it was. Uh, you can't you can't deny it. Um, but it, he obviously didn't. And then you know, obviously the 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 comparisons made to to West Ham's defender last week, 
uh, you know, you kind of go, well, where where are they sitting with with that? You know, it's it's difficult. Uh, but four nil, you know, didn't affect the result. Uh, four nil, uh, and it's kind of what you expected, to be honest. I uh, think I said three nil in my prediction of this game. Uh, I wasn't really surprised. And that's not down to Tottenham's form, by the way. I think Tottenham will struggle against some teams for the rest of the season. But let's be honest, Sheffield United this season have been championship quality. Yeah. Um, and that's why they've struggled. Um, and they, they, they showed that again. And they were lucky to beat Brighton last weekend. We said they were. Um, and it was kind of normal service resumed this weekend. Uh don't really know what else to say, to be honest. Very comfortable win and obviously Bale getting his hat-trick. But again, it was a good hat-trick. Very pleased for him. But again, it was against Sheffield United. Uh, sounds, but a, sounds a few of his finishes were top, top quality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, a t- he's a top quality player and if you give him that time and space, but he wouldn't get that time and space against the top teams in the division. I think yeah. that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, so... It'd be interesting to see what he does. Obviously, he's on loan from Madrid. See if he comes back. I don't think he will, to be honest. I think this will be his, his last season at Tottenham. But we don't really know what's happening with their manager and stuff. Just on that, uh, Brendan Rodgers, we spoke about last week, but Brendan Rodgers is now the bookies' favourite to be the uh, next Oh, season. is he? Yeah, what do you make of that? I think it would be a great, a great point, but... Why would he want to go to Tottenham? I just don't understand that Leicester are an up and coming club, consistently top four. Um, new training ground facilities. Like you, you told me earlier before we recorded that they're looking to spend big money, and I think that's a big bargaining tool. What Leicester are going to do? They're going to sit down with them, saying, "Look, if you stay, you'll have X, Y, Z amount of money to spend. You can buy whoever you want, when you want, and." I think that's what we're gonna to have to do, aren't they? To keep. I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think what's interesting is a lot of a lot of teams, you know, they go, "Oh, Leicester should really be, be in, you know, in where they are." But what people need to remember is, we, I think, we are something like the 18th richest club in the world. So Leicester aren't poor. Let's let's get that right. They have got the money to spend, and they can spend the money if they if they choose to. They're just very shrewd with the money usually. But if they let the chain go off, they could make some great signings. Um, I think um, it'd be, be interesting to see what happens. I don't just just to add to that. I really don't think Brendan Rodgers will leave. Yeah, I don't. I'm not particularly worried about him leaving for Tottenham um, at all. Uh, it's just I think he's the bookies' favourites because he's he's definitely who the Tottenham fans would would want um, for sure. Um, and I think and I think that that says a lot really. You know, I don't and and Brendan Rodgers has already come out last week and the week before and said he's happy at last week, he doesn't want the Tottenham job, pretty much. So I'm not particularly we'll see what worried. happens. I'm not particularly worried as a Leicester fan. Yeah, I wouldn't be either if I'm being honest. Uh so let's move on to Monday's fixtures. West Brom Wolves. This was one one. Uh Wolves got a very, very fortunate uh goal. I don't know if you saw it, Joe, but Fabio Silva went to get the shot. The defender uh, got a foot into it. It came off Fabio uh, Fabio Silva's standing leg and looped over keeper. But <laughs> they took it. It wasn't quite the finish in the end. Um, but then fair play to West Brom. They, I think they deserve to win this game, to be fair. But finish 1-1 of a Black Country derby, I would say it was... I think that's West Brom season over now, yeah, isn't it? It's over. It's over. West Brom won't won't do anything now. Um, I think you know they've got the capabilities to play quite well, but then they've also got the capabilities to play like they did against Leicester, for example. You know, um, or several teams earlier on in the season. So you never know what West Brom you're going to get. I think um, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see if Big Sam Sam Allardyce he stays with them to try and get them back up. Um, it will be interesting. It'll be his first relegation on his CV as a manager as well. Um, yeah, I think I think things just haven't happened at the right time for West Brom, and you know they'll they'll go back down. But I'm sure I'm pretty sure they'll be back up. To be honest with you, if they manage to keep hold of some of their players, I'm pretty confident they will be. They do have some good quality. We're interested to see if Big Sam stays at West Brom as well, because obviously he hasn't got a team relegated from the Premier League yet, so it'll be interesting to see what happens and how he fares if he stays. For sure, sure. definitely. 
Yeah. Uh, moving on to the final game of the weekend, uh, Burnley West Ham. Now this was uh, Monday night's game. Uh, Burnley scored and the first goal with a wood penalty. Just continue continuing wood fine goal scoring form. And then West, uh, sorry West Ham, fair play to him. Antonio, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, scored a brace uh, to make it two one, and that's how it finished. Uh, what did you make of it, Joe? Now, I have to say, I watched this game with quite keen eyes because obviously West Brom, West Brom, West Ham are chasing us down. Um, you know, they've played some terrific football. But I think what was funny is, you know, I almost forgot because the game, this game was a good game. You know, it was Burnley playing to their, their strengths in terms of trying to get it up to Chris Wood. Rodriguez could have got equaliser in the second half, had a couple of chances. Uh, Wood had a couple of chances as well. Uh, they they did have some, they did cause West Ham some problems, but West Ham's football are brilliant to watch. But I think what was it what was interesting for me is I was watching this game with kind of like oh you know I hope West Ham lose, and because I'm a football fan and I just love good football, I forgot why why it was important to me to watch it and just watching good football if that makes sense. Yeah, it was a very um, enjoyable game. Wasn't yeah, it? it was an enjoyable game to watch, and I think West Ham. You know, they've had a great season and they've got some great players. Lingard played really well, obviously. Uh, is it Ben Rama as well? He's, he's yeah. Come from, he's come from Brentford, obviously. It's his first time in, in the Premier League. Obviously, he's had he's had bits and bob starts. It's the first time I've really had a proper look at him and he, he caused him all sorts of problems. A couple of crosses in for Antonio. Antonio, absolute beast in the box. And they've missed him, haven't they? they have oh, missed yeah. Him. Being a Forest um, fan and... You, you just loved him when he played for Forest. The, the strength, the power, the speed. He's just unbelievable. And um, I, I've always rated him, to be fair. I, I said to you when he went to West Ham that it was going to go, uh, going to be a really, really good addition. And it's just paying dividends, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, he he is he's, he's a different proposition because he's kind of, he's not there. It's weird because he's not the, the tallest of strikers, but he's he's powerful in the air. Yeah, he can he can he can jump out of the gym. Do you know what I mean? He's very powerful. Let's make let's make no mistake though. Um, you know, Burnley had their part to play in this. They played some nifty stuff as well. Um, you know, they they played some good stuff. Obviously, West Ham had the line share possession. But to be honest, guys, it was just a it was a fun game to watch, wasn't it? It was, yeah, a, it was a really good game of football to watch, and more power to West Ham. And they're now only. Five points behind Leicester with with uh, four games to go. Uh, yeah, it's so, going to be very you know, very interesting. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Um, I think I think it's it, the, the kind of obviously this weekend's fixtures and stuff. The 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 Man U and Liverpool game not being played has kind of thrown a bit of a uh, kind of a spark in the works, hasn't it? In terms yeah, of it, it was a big game this weekend. Yeah, 100%. And it, it meant that Man City couldn't win the league uh, this weekend, but they'll probably win it next weekend, won't they? Yeah, yeah. It means that Man U can't do anything to stop them now, which is weird to say that they haven't played. They've got a game in hand, but they, they yeah. can't stop them now. It's not anything to do with them playing, which which I think that's the way Pep and Man City will like it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so let's move on to your players of the week, Joe. Who's your players of the week for you? Players of the week has to be has to be the guy that we were just talking about for me. Has to be Antonio. Um and obviously special mention to Bale for getting his hat trick. But I just think obviously Antonio getting back to fitness and just kind of showing what he can offer West Ham. Um, you know, I think it has to it has to go to him. Just because not only because and no disrespect to Tottenham, but it was kind of a game we were expecting them to win. But that was a very important win for West Ham. And they've got some big games coming up, don't get me wrong, and they'll need him even more so but I think in terms of the pressure on the players and stuff that was a massive win and it was he, the chances he had yes they were close in but he, he just took them very well and it was kind of trademark Antonio so for me he gets the player of the week yeah 100% and I have a quick question for you Joe with all the injuries we saw injuries to Ings as well at the weekend so he's a doubt for the Euros there's a lot of doubts for uh up front so if that happens can you see Antonio sneaking to the England squad uh, I know they've increased it to a 26-man squad it's, for the tournament now, haven't it's, they? It's it's difficult, actually. I'm not um, I'm not sure. I think Antonio has declared for a different country, hasn't he? I think he has. I'm not. Uh, I don't. I is don't it think Jamaica? I don't, I, I, I yeah, don't think he's I don't, caught I don't anything think he's yet. Now 
I don't think he's eligible to play for England now. Um, well, he would only be ineligible if he plays for the other country. Yeah, and I think he has. That's what I'm saying. In the last lot of games, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I might need to fact check me on that one. But I think, I think, I think he's definitely his allegiance is to Jamaica. But let's just, for argument's sake, let's just say that he's not. I would, I'd take him for sure. For sure, I'd take he him. would add something different, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. He would, and I think he's, he's slightly different to obviously Harry Kane. Um, he's slightly different to the other options we've got in in Ollie Watkins. My three strikers, if the injuries are stand, to be honest, and Everton fans probably won't like me for this, but I'd go for uh, Harry Kane, Antonio, and Watkins. And the reason for that, for me personally, is because. Kane and Calvert Lewin for me are similar. Are, yeah. are similar type of striker. So you know you're not going to play them together. Um, so that that's the only reason. I think Calvert Lewin. I'm not saying uh, Antonio and Watkins are better strikers. They're just different types of strikers. Um, so I think in terms of attacking threat, you just if you need to change the game up or or uh, Kane gets injured, you know, you can change that game up and, and change the game plan. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's the only reason from a coaching perspective I'd probably go for, for those three. But if Calvert Lewin gets into the side, I'm not gonna be like, oh he shouldn't get into the side. He's definitely up there as well. Like I think he will go. Um and yeah. he, he deserved to go. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to go, but I'm just saying from a coaching perspective I probably would go for Watkins and Antonio over over Calvert Calvert Lewin. Just because, uh, just purely because they're different strikers. Yeah, that's fair. Um, shall we move on to our results for the next week then? Oh, just before we do it, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And yeah, let's get those numbers up, share it with your friends and do whatever you want to do with it. Right, Joe? Nice. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to our results for next week. Uh week's game so i'm gonna blitz we're gonna do a, a blitz run again joe if that's all right so do you want to go through do, do you want to go through yours first and then i'll go through mine yeah yeah sounds good so the first cool. game is leicester newcastle i've gone 2-1 uh leicester i think it's gonna be too much for him leeds spurs leeds is a hard one to predict lately but they're having a bit of a damp squid to the end of the season so i've gone 2 no spurs uh sheffield united crystal palace I'm going to go 1-1 at the end of the day. Uh, I know this is quite controversial, but I think Sheffield United will get something from this game. Uh, Man City-Chelsea, tough game for Man City, but I've gone 3-1. Man City said it's going to be too much. Southampton-Liverpool, I've gone 4-1 Liverpool. Wolves-Brighton, I've gone 1-1. Uh, Villa-Man United, this is going to be a really, really hard game for Man United. But I think Man United are just going to edge this 2-1. West Ham Everton again. This is quite a big game for like the upper uh, part of the table, so I I think it's going to be a high scoring game. So I've gone three to West Ham. Uh, Arsenal West Brom West Brom are pretty much doomed, and Arsenal aren't playing too badly overall. So I've gone uh, two one Arsenal, and finally Fulham Burnley. I've gone nil nil. What did you think of that, Joe? Yeah, I thought I thought a lot of those results were kind of in the same sort of echelon as what I'm going to go for. So, yeah, let's go for it. So, if you just read the the games off to me, and I'll give you my result. Okay, uh, Leicester Newcastle. I'm going to go three nil on this one. I think it's a massive game for Leicester, but if if Newcastle turn up and play like they did against Arsenal, I think Leicester will run it run over them. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Leeds Spurs. Uh, Leeds Spurs. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for one all. I think uh, Leeds. It depends again what Leeds are gonna turn up. But I'm gonna go for a draw in this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sheffield United, Crystal Palace. Uh, again, a bit of a nothing game for both sides. Crystal Palace say I only need to play for, and and obviously Sheffield United don't. So I'm I'm gonna go for a one all as well. I think that's what you went for. So. One one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man City Chelsea. Uh, Man City Chelsea. This is. This is difficult, this one is, because Chelsea are a good side. Um, I think, and obviously they did, Man City will want a revenge in the FA Cup. I'm going to go 2-1 Man City. It's going to be closer than I think a lot of people think. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool, Southampton? 
Liverpool, Southampton, can't see anything else but a Liverpool win on this one. Uh, I'm going to go 2-0 Liverpool. 2-0. Uh, Wolves, Brighton? Wolves, Brighton. Again, a bit of a nothing game now. Uh, there's quite a few of these now because um, things are kind of sorting themselves out. I'm going to go for a 2-1 on Brighton. 2-1 for Brighton. 2-1 Brighton. Okay. Uh, Villa, Man United? Villa Man United, it's, again, like you said, difficult game for United. I think they'll just add you. I'm going to go for a different result. I'm going to go 1-0 United. 1-0 United. Uh, West Ham, Everton. West Ham, Everton, as much as it pains me to say it, I think uh, West Ham will win this one. I'm going to go for 3-1 West Ham. With the way they played last night and the way they can play, yeah, 3-1 West Ham. 3-1 West Ham. And Arsenal, West Brom. Again, nothing game. Arsenal, you'd expect them to win it. I'm going to go 2-0 Arsenal. Yeah, and finally, Fulham-Burnley. Fulham-Burnley. Uh, Burnley going to win this one 3-0. 3-0. Right, there's our predictions for next week's games. Uh, if, you, if you have your own predictions or anything about the Glazers or anything you want to say, please comment below, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube. And if you do, all, if just you let do. us know. If you do get your comments in, guys, uh, we will uh, try our best to obviously mention them on next week's podcast. So, you know, get your get your news, get your views, get your thoughts and stuff. And we'll, you know, you can dictate the way the show goes as well if we get these comments in. Do you know what I mean? We can we can talk about the topics that you guys want to talk about. Yeah. So, yeah. 100%. Right, yeah. Uh, anything else to add, Joe? Happy? No, no. Just looking forward to this weekend. This weekend action and obviously some good Champions League games as well tonight and tomorrow and then and then obviously some Europa League action as well so there's a lot of football this week which I'm really looking forward to and as always next week guys we'll be joined by the one and only you know who he is Peter Crouch you're looking forward to that Joe yeah I am mate I am I can't wait for him to come in for sure for sure <laughs> no, it's well. I'll see you later mate see you later see you later guys